the only way to hunt a giant rat. <laughs> Is with a goddamn giant sword! And spear and staff and shuriken and jewel blades. Hello, my fellow hunters of the wildest hearts! Today it's time for the complete Karakuri Staff Guide. The weapon for those amongst you that think the solution to any given kimono is to simply have a weapon bigger than any kimono. The Juggernaut Blade and, of course, the other four weapons that this tricky, little, slicey, stabby whacker turns into is a quite the eclectic mix and you would be forgiven for at first being quite overwhelmed by everything that it can do and everything that it is. However, the Karakuri Staff is quite simple. It is deadly and it has one goal, one mission, and a very streamlined way to accomplish it. So what's actually going on then? Well, it is for weapons by default. You have uh, the staff, you have the spear, you have the shuriken, and you have the jewel blades. And each of these weapons has a light combo, and each of these weapons has a heavier, more special attack. That's all well and good, and at that point it's quite straightforward. Now, this is where we need to get this part out the way. What this weapon is, is not for weapons. Yes, aesthetically speaking, it looks like for weapons, but you don't play this by choosing which weapon you like the best and just going with it like, I wanna be a shuriken main and I don't care about the other three, nor do you choose the best weapon for the situation or the kimono. No, they are designed and function by flowing between one another. You might as well look at every weapon, every form's attacks, as simply just the moveset of a single weapon that just happens to change shape as you do the moves that you have learnt. And that's an important distinction to make here. Don't look at the Karakuri staff like, oh god, I have to learn five different weapons movesets in one weapon. No, honestly, it is one of the simpler weapons in the game once you have played it a little bit. So before we go through each weapon's attacks, one general note about this weapon is how fast you can move while unsheathed. You really have a lot of mobility here, and you can use it very much to your advantage when it comes to building your meter. Though we will get to that, but it is important to remember. We have then the staff, which has a regular just beat em up combo, and then a big flip jump slam. We have the Jewel Blades, which has a rapid multi-hit regular combo, and then a big leaping, gap-closing, ground-covering slice as its big one. Then we have the Giant Shuriken, who can do a couple swipes with it, and then the Heavy Special is to throw it for a lot of multi-hits through the Kimono and then catch it. Finally, we have the Spear, who has some big slicing chops, and then a slow wind-up spinning multi-hit thrust, which does an appreciable amount of damage. That is what we're working with, and you'll be noticing that as I've been doing it, well, there have been flashes occurring around my character at the end of each series of attacks. If you press the mutate the transform button as one of these flashes happens, well, you will smoothly transition into not just the next weapon form, but to the next part of the combo. And every time you successfully do that, you will build a segment of the mutation meter. Now, once you reach at least four segments, you can pull out the Juggernaut Blade. Between 4 and 9, you will do this lovely 2-hit combo, which does a metric ton of damage. But your goal is always to go the full way to maximum meter, because then that Juggernaut Blade combo gets a finishing move that is the single hardest hitting highest damage attack in the entirety of Wild Hearts, and consistently pulling this off makes you a kimono killing god. So, how do we consistently pull this off? Well, as I said, it is all about just chaining through the weapon. 
So what you're going to want to do is run up to the kimono and the weapon does have a really nice sprinting attack that will pull out uh, the shuriken for the big throw which will let you nicely chain off it and it's actually a really nice way to build meter in a sort of hit and run, throw it, do the next mutate attack, then leave, so on and so forth, but run up to the kimono hit it with a sprinting special, mutate on the flash, and then follow through the combo. And the way to do that is simple. Run up to the kimono, draw in to either your square or triangle attack, depending on how much time it has to give you with the current opening, and then press the mutate on the flash to go into the next hit. Then decide if you want to either finish the combo that you mutated into or swap to the weapon's other side of moves and then repeat ad infinitum or until you're forced to stop or you get hit. And for a specific example of what I mean, say you have had the flash, you've pressed the mutate button and you've done a swipe with the shuriken. You're now holding the shuriken. Depending on where you are stood now, where the kimono is stood relative to you and how safe the situation is depending on what the kimono is doing you either choose to do the square swipe and then flash transform or you choose to do the triangle slower throw for more damage and range and then transform and that's what I mean every time you mutate look at the weapon you now have either finish the combo that the mutate led into or swap to the other button if that attack better serves the purpose of the situation depending on the opening that you have so essentially true mastery of this weapon is not about learning lots of complicated inputs or combos, it's more about memorizing what turns into what and what options you have now immediately available based on that transformation, so you're essentially predicting your path through the combos and the transforms alongside what you and the kimono are doing. Then once you reach that 8 stage mutation, look for your opening either via a evolved karakuri, a pitfall trap, a half Poon gun lockdown to land the juggernaut blade and that's landing the juggernaut blade once you've reached max mutation is where the skill lie in this weapon to get the opportunity to force it because you do not get a lot of time before your hard work your hard built up meter dissipates rendering everything you've done up until this point pointless and when you're not getting consistent juggernaut blades you're really not competing with the other weapons in terms of your damage output that said you do get about 30 seconds by default before it will naturally go which feels like a long time but in practice you will often find yourself when you're first learning this weapon and you start using it against more advanced harder kimono you'll find that that feels like nothing and you just for the life of you cannot get it to happen and that's the practice that's the learning again helped by advanced karakuri if you simply save the pressure pad pitfall for each time you've got the juggernaut blade ready well well, that is a really nice starter way to do this. Other than that then, we have the box attack, which from 4 mutation bars onwards, you can do the sword drop. And then we have the normal drop attack, which is a nice little hit that then you can mutate from for a lot of little hits. We have spring, which works similar, an attack that you can mutate from. And the torch also gives an attack that you can mutate from. Essentially, everything this weapon can do that isn't the juggernaut blade can mutate into the next form of the weapon weapon to help get you to the juggernaut blade and that's why this weapon is very simple in its premise but it is all about the execution it's simply attack the monster with an infinite mutate combo eight times then juggernaut blade repeat now there are a few things to know about a few little nuances one of them being the heavy spinning spear stab actually well ignores you being attacked by the kimono in most situations for example here on the training bear it's just powering through the projectile and it's not impacting you so you can use that to uh, well help you get those mutation bars those levels up and as another tip you can opportunistically around the zone you're fighting in use your mutation attacks on small kimono that have got too close to you to get some cheeky extra meter in like this poor lizard here who got a 
little bit too close to uh, the overarching backwards smack. Other than that, you use the extreme mobility of never having to sheath, you do the hit and run sprint draw attack, and you have to really just take every little bit of time the kimono gives you to even just do one mutate attack and get one more notch on that bar and make sure you get the next one within 30 seconds. There's not really much more for me to say other than good luck when it comes to the Karakuri Staff, a hearty mix of dual blades and greatsword that feels so much fun to play, and when it flows, it is just beautiful, and it is so unbelievably powerful. You only need to land a handful of full juggernaut blades to essentially end a hunt, and when you're playing with those kind of stakes, it really is fun. A few little recommendations for skills then to go for on your weapons. The easiest one is extra time before your bar resets. This makes the weapon a lot more forgiving and will give you a lot more comfort in using it properly and landing those juggernaut blades. Obviously this is less ideal once you're very ultra comfortable with it, but it's a good one to start with. We also have extra mutation level to start, which is really nice too. Build faster, that's always good. And then, of course, this one that makes you take loads less damage every time you mutate. With a Karakuri Staff with this, you can actually be super aggressive and not really care too much that you get hit, because you will take such little damage that even just healing mist can be your source of healing, and you just keep attacking and attacking and attacking somewhat reckless. So that's uh, my main recommendations, other than your usual damage skills in general that are all over the place. I hope then you have found this useful as a basic introduction to the Karakuri stuff, how it's aiming to play and what it's aiming to do. There is of course nuance and if you guys would like, an advanced tips and tricks is of course something that we can do for you. But for now, have fun hitting Kimono with just the goddamn biggest sword. Like if you enjoyed this, subscribe and hit the bell for more. Consider supporting the future of the channel on Patreon down below. And until we meet again, a good boy. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice. To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage. Is. Uh, goodbye.